Hi everyone, this is Rhonda with the Salem Public Library bringing you another short video on how to avoid online scams, part two. In the first part, I showed you a little bit about how you can identify email scams, um, but today I'm going to go ahead and veer in a little bit different direction and talk about a few other types. So some of the most popular scams are phishing or spoofing. Um, for those who may not know, phishing is when somebody is trying to obtain your personal information directly from you. So you have someone maybe perhaps sending a text message saying that your credit card needs verified for a certain charge to go through. Uh, that is a direct access to you. Now the other one is spoofing. Now spoofing is when you take a company, usually in some cases it could be like a company website, uh, and duplicate it in order to trick people into providing their information to you. So some of the other ones can be, we have shopping scams, which you know you can definitely get into on the, on the internet. Uh, there's a lot of places who aren't really validated through the BBB, the Better Business Bureau. And so therefore, if they rip you off in any way, you really don't have any rights to your money being refunded because it wasn't necessarily a proper website to go through. Uh, we also have, of course, your IRS scams. And this one's super basic, but the best thing I can say about it is to just remember that the IRS will never ask you for your personal information. Uh, if they have anything that they need to talk to you about, they will send it through the mail. They are not fans of the internet. They are not fans of on electronic communication. Uh, they want everything to go through the mail. So never answer any emails, text messages, or questions through an online source about the IRS and the information that you may need to give them. So what I really wanted to show you today is about social media scams. So there are a few different things that I want to talk about, but I'm going to try to make it quick. Uh, so here, this is mostly through Facebook. As you can see, there are three options here, and all three of these are scams. So the first one I'm going to go into is just this common advertisement. So I don't know about you guys, but I know I've had a few times where I was browsing a web page. Maybe I clicked on a video on YouTube to see what it was, and all of a sudden, my page gets this flash of, oh my gosh, congratulations, you've just won a cruise or this $1,000 Amazon gift card. So I want to make it crystal clear to everyone that this is clickbait. So what it is, is it's it's usually based off of an ad of some kind, and it pops up on your social media. And oftentimes we have curious minds. Oh, how did I how did I win this sweepstakes? Let me go ahead and click and see. Once you actually click into it, it then allows that scam to work in your social media. So at this point, your 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 friends on your social media list are probably going to get some sort of message from you saying hey, congratulations, you've also won $1,000. And really all it is is a way to get into your contact list. Um, not just that, but sometimes there is malware that is attached to this that can end up infecting your computer. So it's not a... It's not an overly scary type of scam, but it is one that we frequently see on social media. The next one is just a message. Um, this one is about the Social Security Administration Department. It says that they are informing you that your Social Security number has been suspended. Now that sounds super scary to anyone who might not know uh, what this is. And so, Really, this is just another example. The Social Security Office, again, just like the IRS, they are not going to message you through Facebook. That is just not the way they operate. So if you ever get any messages like this through text or through Facebook Messenger or maybe even like Instagram, uh, just know that it is absolutely 100% a scam. And the last example I wanted to show you so there are a few of these going around right now. It's quite sad that some of them are actually preying on people um, who maybe have lost a loved one. And there sometimes there are these messages that 
come from a friend that say, wow, you know, oh my goodness, I'm so sad to hear that, you know, this person passed away. And then it gives you a link. I myself being a pretty tech savvy actually fell victim to that. Um, a close contact of mine who I talk to on a daily basis had sent this message to me and said, oh no, you know, I, I'm so sad to hear um, that this person passed away. And then there was a link. Well, when I clicked on the link thinking that maybe it was an obituary or maybe it was a news article, instead, it literally was just a scam. Um, I immediately had to change my passwords because it hacked into my contact list and started to send that to everyone on my contact list. So I know firsthand that it was a scam. So this one here um, is something that was a few years back, but it was a big one where you're getting messages saying, oh, look who's in this photo, or is this you in this photo? And a lot of people are curious, like, oh, I did go out with my friends last weekend. I don't know, maybe they snapped a picture of me doing something silly. Um, don't click it. It is not real. So those are just a couple of examples that I wanted to show you. Uh, there are other types of scams. You know, we have our catfishing, which is when people are presenting themselves in a in a profile as one person when really there's someone else. The other one that's really circulated around Facebook all the time are those personal quizzes. You know, the ones I'm talking about, the ones that say, oh, you know, Rhonda is the color green today. Take this quiz and find out why. Um, that really all that is, is it's baiting you to enter in your personal information because when you wanna get the results, what do you have to do? You have to enter in an email or you have to share it on your social media so other people can click. And really all that is, is they are baiting you into providing the information they need. And sometimes they even take this information and share it with hackers. Um, and those hackers try to encrypt your passwords and hack into your information based on the answers to your quiz surveys. So there are other a couple of other ones, you know, we want to make sure we're staying away from scams dealing with jobs. Um, there are a lot of legitimate work from home jobs, but please make sure you're doing your research. If it seems too good to be true, it almost always is. And so make sure that it's not asking you to invest money or it's offering a position that you've never heard of before. Uh, those are all things to look out for if you are on the, on the search. There's also fake or bad downloads. Uh, so if you're getting an email with an attachment and you don't know who the source is that sent it, or if it seems a little odd to you, it's not lining up with, you know, your friends are, you know, your friends were at the barbecue yesterday and they took some pictures and they want to send them to you. Most of the time they're going to let you know, hey, I'm sending you some photos. It's me who's emailing you or it's me who's texting you. If you're not really having that type of communication with someone, just don't open it or don't download anything. That's the biggest one. Uh, a lot of there are just so many scams out there that get people to download everything. And that, that's really how a lot of these work. Um, be careful of online dating because there's lots of catfishing out there for that. And then also find print scams. Basically, this is for anything that requires a signature on paperwork um, and it has a lot of a lot of wording that basically you scroll through because it'll be five pages of, of text. And really, they're just like, oh, we just need your signature down at the bottom. And not everybody has the time to read all of that tiny print. So make sure that you're talking to customer service representatives and finding out what the, the end means is there and make sure that it's something that you're truly agreeing to with your consent versus without. All right, everybody, I think that's going to do it for me today. I hope this provided a little more information for you on how to avoid the online scams. I will be doing a part three soon. So keep an eye out for that. And if you have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave them on the Salem, Ohio Public Library Facebook page. All right, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day.